Hey folks, welcome back to the Audi Hawks YouTube channel and we're here to do another cable video and we have Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Hey guys, just to let you know again, since we're doing the cable video, we got the blue shirts, we're not Scientologists, it just, no. worked, it just worked out that way that he showed up to our studios with the same color shirt as me. Complete coincidence. We're not <laughs> selling you Diagnetics, we're not going to take your Thetan levels. Nope. No happening. <laughs> no happening. But we are going to educate you on how to make your own speaker cables today. How about that? Oh, absolutely. And you know, speaker cables, as you know, that's kind of like a religion for some people, you know? It is, and we're here to dispel that religion. Yes, as a matter of fact, we're going to teach you how to be God, right? And put your own speakers together. That's it. We've got the God particles right here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, ditch out the uh, creation code. Well, how do we do this? First of all, I got a, a speaker cable here from a company called Kimber, and this is a beautiful cable. It's expensive. It's the 8, 8 TC cable. Very low gauge, uh, very low inductance, very low resistance. And it's a, basically a braided cable. You could braid your own cable. Um, you could get a bunch of Cat5 and, and twist them together and, and, and get the effective gauge down to what this is. It's a lot of work. It's labor intensive. We do have an article on how to do that. Um, I think it's a little too complex to be putting a video together. So I'm going to tell you how to terminate and make a basic zip cord cable. Okay. So we've got this basic 16 gauge. Um, I don't recommend using 16 gauge for long runs. If it's under 10 feet and you're in a pinch, use it, it's fine. You buy any kind of 16 gauge cable that's, you know, you get it at Home Depot or whatever. Mm -hmm. The real important thing is to get good terminations good terminations, on terminations right? And here we have these um, compression banana plugs. Mm -hmm. I got these from Blue Jeans Cable. A lot of people sell these. I love them because you screw them in, you know, you tighten down the little screws and then when you go to stick it into your speaker, as you screw it, it expands and it stays, it makes a really good locking connection on your binding post. That's good. How many times have you, have you seen people hook up speakers with, uh, speakers and their, especially on their receivers, with, just with bare cable? Yeah. As soon as when you shake the receiver to That's move it, it bah, all the cables out. pop out. Yep. I hate that. That's like a huge pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Same. The other thing too is you don't want to terminate bare cable into a receiver because you're going to get stray cable, stray, uh, stray conductors are going to hit the receiver and if the grounds hit with the, with the positives, you're going to shut your receiver off. Yeah. I real. can't tell you, every time we get an email from someone that says their receiver keeps shutting off when they turn the volume up, nine times out of ten has nothing to do with the, the amp can't drive the speakers. It's because they have bad connections mm -hmm. and they have stray wires hitting and grounding. Yeah. That's the problem. So get some good uh, terminations like these banana plugs. And you know, here's what I recommend, guys. 12 gauge cable's good, 10 gauge cable even better, lower resistance. But this 14.4 I got here, again from Blue Jeans Cable, it's got four conductors, 14 gauge, okay? You could do two things. You could, if you want to buy amp, you terminate like this on both ends. So you have uh, the high pass and low pass to your speaker, and then you have two amplifier channels on the other end. You could also buy wire, again the buy wire. <laughs> uh, when you buy wire, you're going to basically connect the two whites and the two reds together, so you're only going to have two connectors, not four. Okay? You could buy wire, or here's the cool thing: you got 14-4, and this is what I recommend over buy wiring. You get the conductors. There's four conductors. You tie the two reds on each side together. You tie the two whites on each side together. By doing that, you're taking that 14 gauge resistance, bringing it down three steps to 11 gauge. So you're getting near DC resistance to 10 gauge cable and it's a little bit more manageable because 10 gauge can be really thick and really hard to terminate. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to get 10 gauge cable into these uh, terminations here. Sure. So 14.4 is a good way to go. This is not a pretty solution. It's kind of pedestrian, but you know what? It works. This is good cable. This, this is job done. Yeah. And you know, the nice thing is if you run this behind drywall, the 14.4, the bare wire, if, so, if for some reason, you know, you get a nail stuck in the wall and it breaks one of the connectors, you got redundancy now. You got two pairs here. Mm -hmm. Or you could later down the road hook up another height channel or whatever you want to do. Yeah, you want to have more speakers. Yeah, you can do some expansion. So yeah, I mean, guys, you know, you could buy cables pre-terminated like these Kimbers, or you could buy cable in bulk, cut it to the length that you need. And I always recommend cutting 20% more than you think you need. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you need 
if you need 12 feet, cut it to 15. Right. Because so how many times have you seen people that they cut the cable too short and then the receiver's moving? <laughs> That's it. Because they can't put the speaker where they want. You yeah. Know? You don't want, the thing you don't want on a cable is tension. Anytime mm -hmm. you put tension on a cable, it's going to loosen over time. Mm -hmm. The connectors could possibly pop out. Yeah. Or you might not get the greatest connection because the thing you want to do with these cables is you want to minimize contact resistance. So the better connection you get at the binding post and tighten it down, the less losses you get for resistive losses by having more contact resistance. Exactly. So you don't want contact resistance. You want to have this nice and loose. Awesome advice, Gene. Awesome advice, because we've been getting a lot of questions of the do-it-yourself uh, crowd, you know, sure. asking, you know, to see if there's anything they could do with the cables and how to best do it. And I think this really gives them the answer. It's you know? not rocket science. You don't need to you don't need to soak it in kosher chicken fat, blessed by a rabbi. <laughs> you know, you don't need to cryogenically freeze it. <laughs> stick it to the battery, the car you battery. Know? Yeah, I mean, if you really want to stick a, uh, a 1.5 volt battery on the end and say you have a DBS electric bias system, <laughs> do it, man. I mean, it's 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 good bragging rights, just don't hook it up to anything because they don't do it anyways. Ooh, you get a little alien. <laughs> Gives you that again. little aliens from Toy Story, the woo <laughs> effect. <laughs> awesome stuff, Gene. Great stuff, you know. We'd love to know how many of you are doing your own cables, you know. Definitely go ahead and comment below and uh, let us know what you think and what kind of experience you're having. Is there anything else you want to add, Gene? No, I think we covered it. I mean, uh, like I said, just choose a low gauge cable, the lowest you can accommodate. You know, I would say the minimum 12 gauge if you're really serious or 14.4 is, is my pick, mm -hmm. uh, go-to cable. I use it in pretty much any system regardless of price. That's a good solution, real good solution. And if you don't like this, you could paint it or you could put little aluminum or whatever you want on it to make it look pretty. <laughs> you know, you could uh, get it embroidered. <laughs> if you go to Things Remembered and get it embroidered if you want. It's still cheaper than buying an exotic cable. Oh, for real. God, <laughs> incredible. And it'll sound as good or better. <laughs> yes, and measure very well too. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. You all, you know how it is. The proof is in the pudding, right? That's true. So <laughs> there we go. So on that note, I'll invite our uh, viewers to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, comment below and also click like uh, if you like this video and share it with your friends. And until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.